What's going on guys? Welcome back to United View. Hope everyone is doing very well and some breaking news coming in the last couple of minutes. I'm going to wait for people to file in before I press the button because people complain whenever I press this button. But yes, some breaking news coming in the last couple of minutes when it comes to the future of John Murto at Manchester United or rather the lack thereof of the Manchester United football director because he is stepping down and could be gone as soon and as early as this week. This is a story that's come through from The Athletic, from David Ornstein and from Laurie Whitwell. As I mentioned, it's some breaking news. It's a combination of logging on to Ornhub, but also I don't know what the Laurie Whitwell equivalent is. But nevertheless, there is some breaking news coming in the last couple of minutes, as I mentioned. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner, because as I said, what do we have? I'll tell you exactly what we have. We have some Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> The breaking news this lunchtime is that Manchester United football director John Murto has stepped down from his post and will leave the club this week after more than 10 years of service as the Ineos-led restructure of the sporting operations at Old Trafford continues. Oh, I feel like an actual news reporter and everything. All I need is some papers to shuffle at the end of it. I need to do a bit of that. Yes, uh, let's get into the quotes. As I said, this is a story that's coming courtesy of The Athletic, coming courtesy of Laurie Whitwell and from David. Ornstein this lunchtime and it says as follows we'll get these sort of major quotes and I'll read you the whole thing might as well um, saying that Manchester United football director John Murto has stepped down from his post and will leave the club this week after more than 10 years service as the Ineos led restructure of sporting operations at Old Trafford continues. It carries on by saying, but in a move now set to be officially confirmed, Murto has decided to stand aside altogether and let the new setup take shape. Murto will effectively be replaced by Dan Ashworth once the Newcastle United sporting director's spell of gardening leave finishes, while Southampton director of football Jason Wilcox is on course to be named technical director. United hope Wilcox will start in the coming weeks, provided an agreement can be reached on compensation, whereas more time could be required for Ashworth to commence his duties. As I said, I'll read you the whole thing because it's quite, actually quite a short article because it is a developing story. And usually the way these things tend to go and tend to work is that um, the story gets out and then I wouldn't be shocked if an official announcement from United comes really within the next few hours, maybe tomorrow, something like that. I mean, if he's stepping down by the end of the week, it's any time now that Manchester United could make uh, an official statement on this. But as I said, it's uh, it says that John Moto is stepping down as this restructure within Old Trafford continues. The investment into United by Sir Jim Ratcliffe and the appointments he is making to key roles produced an expectation that Murto would depart or be offered a different position. But in a move uh, now set to be officially confirmed, Murto has decided to stand aside altogether and let the new setup take shape. I mentioned that he's going to be effectively replaced by Dan Ashworth and also Jason Wilcox is set to be named as the tech technical director. It's hoped that Wilcox can come in quicker than Ashworth because, of course, Newcastle are demanding a high amount of compensation, rumoured to be around £20 million. Southampton, not as much, although they're still pretty annoyed with how Manchester United have moved when it comes to getting their director of football. As far as Murto, it brings an end to his decade at Manchester United, who he joined in 2013 after stints for uh, working for the Premier League, Everton, as well as Fulham. Having initially focused on the academy and scouting, Murto was promoted to head of football development in 2016 and became United's first football director five years later. This essentially placed him in overall charge of the men's, women's and academy operations. He was central to the arrival of Eric Ten Hag as manager in 2022, heavily involved in squad building and has been constructing a team around him that includes the likes of Deputy Football Director Andy O'Boyle, Director of Football Operations David Harrison and Director of Football Negotiations Matt Hargreaves. They are among those tasked with leading United on a day-to-day -day basis in the period between Murto's exit and his successes beginning. Ineos Director of Sports, Dave Brailsford, will be on hand to offer executive oversight. Murto is often criticised for United's activity in the transfer market, but collaboration with colleagues such as Director of Academy Nick Cox to bring homegrown talent through to senior level has earned the Englishman credit. The transformation of that area and the women's side are considered positive developments. Many 
of Murto's responsibilities will eventually be assumed by Ashworth and Wilcox, while Omar Barada is due to arrive from Manchester City as chief executive this summer. Interestingly, when it comes to the future of Darren Fletcher, Darren Fletcher remains technical director at present. And according to the article, because this is the key thing, Jason Wilcox will be coming in as the technical director. It's led to many people thinking, well, what does that mean for Darren Fletcher's future? Well, according to David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell, Manchester United want Darren Fletcher to stay but under an alternative title, one of which is not yet finalised because he's the technical director in title, but he's still on the training pitch. And it's kind of like, well, what role is he actually doing? Do they actually know what they want that technical director position to be? So in addition to Murto stepping down, it looks like the future of Darren Fletcher is somewhat secure. They want him to stay just in a different role. They've got to figure out what that role is actually going to be. Now, there's more sort of analysis of this, which we'll get into in just a second. But initial reactions, let me know your initial thoughts to that in the chat as well as clicking the like button and subscribing as you're filing in on this emergency live this lunchtime um i can't say i'm shocked the thing i found the most shocking um regarding john murto throughout this whole process was the reports coming out that suggested that he was going to stay i found it quite frankly laughable we, we kept hearing these stories didn't we uh, occasionally which is John Murto he's still doing his day-to-day -day role at Manchester United and he wants to show Ineos that um he's a team player and he's acting as if he means to go on and nope he's going to be sticking around and he's going to get involved and he wants to help Ineos as best as he can and people then start to freak out oh oh how can Ineos be this beacon of change when they're keeping the same people around oh and this is why sometimes when stuff comes out in the media, you have to take it for what it is. Sometimes people do their talking through the media. And when John Murto, these things came out about him in the media, oh, he's happy and he's still working with people, he's well liked. All that was, was him maybe trying to curry favour and keep his job or keep working at Manchester United. And as time goes on, it becomes very evident that and this is why I keep talking about with the manager Ineos are bringing in their own people they're bringing in their own guys they're bringing in their own structure and they want what they perceive to be the best in class John Murto is not the best in class when it comes to director of football football director whatever title you want to give him he is not the best in class as the article points out has he done some things that are good sure sure he has the, the academy is is stronger and I, I was uh, reading a, a post from I think it was called Academy Scoop and they were saying I tell you what in in the in the next couple of years you're going to see more and more names come through that academy it's really really strong at the moment I mean they beat Liverpool 9-1 the other day the under 18 so they've got some proper players coming through and uh, you can argue when it comes to the women's side of things I know they're not doing as well this season but they have developed that as well so you could go right positive ticks but when it comes to some of the glaring failures during his time at Manchester United, he was responsible for bringing in Ralph Ranick. Now, you could say that was a good move, but we weren't ready for it or the Glazers didn't want it, but it didn't work out. He has spent a huge, huge amount of money. <laughs> huge. His negotiating tactics are no different than Ed Woodward, let's be honest. And, I, and this is the thing. I remember when it was John Murto's first summer. I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because you've got to. You've, you've got to be like, right, the people that were in charge before, in charge of negotiations in terms of transfer windows and what have you, they're gone, so fresh start. And the fresh start didn't really smell that fresh, did it? It wasn't that much different. What was he doing? He was flying all over the all over the world, flying all over Europe, going to Turin to talk to Rabio's mum, nothing happened. Going to Spain to talk to Barcelona about Frankie de Jong, nothing really happened. So it was no different. Last minute transfers, panic buys, Anthony with that escalating, um, Casemiro giving him a super long contract and one of the highest fee, uh, fees paid ever for a player over 30. Like that's that's the legacy. That's the legacy of John Murto is no really different from the past. And that's when we're talking about the best in class, when we're talking about the best people that are, the premier levels at what they do, John Murto, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, but doesn't fall into that conversation. And all of the stuff that's been coming out, as I said, in the, in the months leading up to this about, oh, he's there doing his job still. Well, of course he is. Just because Ineos have bought in doesn't mean that whilst they don't have a replacement, Murto just stops doing his job. As we kept saying over and over, you, you just, until you're told differently, take each day as it comes. You just carry on. 
Until I'm told differently, I keep doing my job, I keep doing my job. Then it becomes very apparent, oh, someone's going to come in and take my job. Someone's going to come in and do my job, so I guess I'm out of here. And then you step down. Now, it, it might be a case of, again, you're looking at the word step down. Did he go to Sir Dave Brailsford, oh, I think I should leave? Or did they say to him, look, people are coming in, mate. People are coming in. We're getting uh, Dan Ashworth. We're getting Jason Wilcox. So, and then you go, right, so am I, is, is, am I, do I get to keep my position? No, you don't. Are you, so it's, it's like that scene out of the office. We think it's best that you should leave, um, that, you, that, you, that you go. And you go, are you telling me that I have to go? Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing, isn't it? So uh, this, is, this is not totally surprising news. It's news that myself have felt been coming for a while. And um, uh, as I mentioned, I think that, the the it makes it does make you have I, I would think maybe a little bit of perspective on certain things that you see in the media um because you can kind of see through it with what it is for all of that talk about John Murto he might stay he might still be involved and he's really happy to be involved and he likes Ineos and Ineos like him a couple months later he's gone actions speak louder than words and they always will and the action so far from Ineos is there is sweeping change at Manchester United. Now, it's not going to come overnight. It's not going to become immediately. This is, this really is quite fast. And there is this, particularly with executives, there is this difficult period now where you're trying to sort of get people into post and you're trying to manage gardening leaves. We're trying to manage notice periods. And that's why it's kind of been, it feels maybe a little bit stop, start, stop, start. But just look at the positions that are, that are changing at Manchester United. We've got a new chief executive, Richard Arnold, gone. Omar Barada in. We're getting a new football director, Dan Ashworth. He's coming in at some point. John Murto gone. Jason Wilcox, he's coming in. Darren Fletcher, the current technical director, he's staying at the club, but he's moving into a different role, probably closer to the training pitch is where he is anyway. Because anyone with half a brain would look at that situation and go, you're the technical director. You're on the pitch every day. So why don't you just... You know, why don't you just go into that? Why don't we figure out what that role is and you just do that? Because that should make more sense, should it not? So, uh, and this is this is the right way to do it, isn't it? For all the talk about transfers and for all the talk about, about the manager and the future of a lot of people at the club, it has to be done in a step-by-step -step basis. You have to get these people in first or at least get the pieces into place. As I said, some people have to will be able to come in later than others contractually. But as long as you get these pieces into place, that's when that's when you can start making the decisions on, you know, the manager or the players or bigger players. I mean, certain you know futures of players will um, will will take care of themselves. We spoke about it earlier on this morning, flexing myself. You know, players that are already out on loan or players that are out of contract, their their futures will be taken care of pretty quickly and pretty easily. But those sort of bigger conversations about players that still do have time left on their contracts or the manager, you need to get those people in that are going to be working with them every day and then everyone's on the same page and then they make that call. So I think that um, this is welcome news. This is positive news. And it's just the latest change, it, it, one of many. And um, again, it's not it's not surprising for me anyway, uh, at all. Uh, what are people saying in the chat here about this at the moment? Um, uh, Lux Hill says, so our only senior board members till further notice are Darren Fletcher and Dave uh, Brailsford. Um, well, because this is what there's, there's, it says in the article there, the people that are still currently there. So that team that's been uh, put around um, or constructed by uh, John Murto, um, they're going to act in the interim. This is Andy O'Boyle, David Harrison, Matt Hargreaves. We also have to be cognizant that there isn't a ton of time until the likes of Omar Barada and Jason Wilcox come in. Even if they decide, oh, they're going to come in at the end of the season, what's that, a couple of months away? I mean, I think Omar Barada starts in July. In terms of the... Um, in terms of the acting CEO at the moment, that's uh, Patrick Stewart, isn't it? So it's not as if, you know, it's a free-for-all or anything like that. We've certainly got people uh, in the position at the moment. And uh, at, that's always the case when there's changes at an executive level, is there is this sort of period where you get interims or you get people that are acting blank position, whatever position you want to think of. So there is going to be this period of a bit of, not uncertainty, but spinning a few different plates at the same time. But that's 
I, I would view that as growing pains. I would view that as growing pains and um, and hopefully when it comes to Jason Wilcox, I'm pretty confident in the Jason Wilcox one getting done fairly quickly. At least United feel that that's the case, don't they? Uh, the Dan Ashworth one appears to have slowed down. Not that any of the deals in jeopardy because they, they've both left their respective clubs. Dan Ashworth has gone. He's on garden leave. He's not at Newcastle anymore. He's been shut out of his company laptop and what have you. And uh, Jason Wilcox, the same. He's resigned. And it's just a case of United still working on the compensation for it. Dan Ashworth, I, as time goes on, you feel less and less confident that United are going to give him a huge amount of compensation for Dan Ashworth. I do think that might change depending on league position and PSR and FFP and things like that. Because, of course... If Newcastle do finish the season, where are they currently in the league? Ninth? Eighth? They finish there and the the finances are a bit tight, then maybe Manchester United can leverage that and utilise that. Same way that Manchester United, depending on where we finish in the league, that might depend on some of our revenue, some of our incoming as well. And maybe we'll have to uh, be a bit more careful with that as well. When it comes to Southampton, I mean, the, the report was, wasn't it, with Jason Wilcox, is that Manchester United had... Um, a, a sort of a loose agreement with Southampton of this is what the deal would look like if we were to get him, can we talk to him? And they said yes. We then started talks with him and then kind of allegedly, according to Southampton anyway, revised our offer and our level of compensation came down based on a couple of factors, meaning primarily that he w he wasn't there, for he hasn't been there for that long. And Southampton weren't happy about that. But I think United are being very tough negotiators here. And this is a good thing. That is a good thing because Manchester United so often have had their pants pulled down, haven't they? Whenever we go to the negotiation table, we get absolutely uh, rinsed when it comes to negotiation. We just give people what they want. And I think Ineos are being a bit smart here by looking at both situations and going, both guys are gone. They're not coming back. So you can, you can either pay them to sit at home for however long period is they're contracted to, or we can work out a deal and you can get a replacement in and you can get a bit of money as well and we can figure it all out. So I think that, um, again, Wilcox, I think will be faster than Ashworth, but we shall see, certainly. Super Chat from Rob says, uh, Murto's decade of dysfunction finally comes to an end, whilst it remains to be seen if we're going to be more efficient moving forward, still positive news. Yeah, and I think that is, I think that's the case with it. I think, I, it's been interesting to notice, hasn't it? Whenever we talk about the changes that uh, Ineos are making and these people leaving and we talk about the summer and players uh, going in and going out and the manager, there is this kind of pushback. And I, and I do get it. I understand it when people are like, well, I don't know why you're putting all of this hope in Ineos to do the right thing. Why, why would you think that? Why would you think that? And you can only, I think, base those opinions that's what they are. You can only base those opinions off of evidence that we've seen already. And I think, in fairness, the evidence you would suggest from Ineos so far is pretty positive. The bar's very low when it comes to Man United because we're not used to people in positions of power doing anything that we would perceive as good, progressive, or exciting. We're just used to dividends, incompetence, overspending, underselling. That's all we're used to at Manchester United. Oh, and rotting when you talk about the stadium as well. That's that's all we're used to. So, so far, to see that we've got a task force together to figure out what we're going to do with the stadium, whether it's a new build or renovating what we've got, but it looks more into a new build adjacent to Old Trafford, downscaling out into something else that the club can use. Again, positive, and that's very, done very quickly. A new CEO, he's already in place. He starts in the summer. We know who the new, what, what a lot of the executive structure is going to look like at Manchester United already. We know it's going to consist of Dan Ashworth. We know it's going to consist of Jason Wilcox. Um, John Murto's now gone as well. Um, that's positive stuff, and that's quick stuff. They've, I mean, the, the deal's only been ratified for, was it two months? Something like that. I know they were working unofficially at Carrington since it got... Um, announced in, in on Christmas Eve but this is this is quick stuff now there's still a lot to prove and they're still not I think people are wise not to you know jump in with two feet and just assume that Sir Jim and Ineos are complete savers and everything they're going to do is going to be completely right they're going to get nothing wrong 
Um, of course, they're going to make mistakes. And the proof will always be in the pudding. But so far, the pudding looks pretty good. And I know you would say, Owen, I'm taking pudding advice from you. Look at the size of you. I'll, I'll judge the pudding myself. And that's fair to do as well. But um, certainly uh, today and so far, I would I would look at it as uh, as positive news for, for Manchester United. Uh, I would. Uh, we've got over 600 people watching, which is great for a middle of the day emergency live out of nowhere. So if you haven't already, click the like button. Let's see if we can get the likes up to, what should we say? 200, 250? Something, something along those lines, 250 maybe. Um, and be sure to subscribe as well, bottom right-hand corner. You can see in the top right-hand corner there, we are 163,000, if I can count, uh, 841 subs. Let's see if we can get it to uh, 163,850. Why not? Just nine extra ones. Let's just, let's just see. Let's just see if, let's just see if we can, you know. Set yourself targets. You never know. Let's see if we can do it. Um, as SLD says, I like this. I'm just putting it out there. That's terrific. Well done, SLD. That's that's tremendous. That's, yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Good content there. Excellent. Big up Rich in the chat as well. Says smash the likes, people. Indeed. So if you are just joining us again, the uh, the news, I'm not going to press the breaking news thing again. I pressed it once. Sometimes I press it and we get angry comments and people say, the breaking news thing is too long. And you sort of have to go, you know, what's that going over your head? It's the joke. It's, the, it's, it's purposely very long and purposely very over the top and purposely very silly. But, you know, each to their own, I guess. Uh, but if you are just joining us, the breaking news coming in the last few minutes from The Athletic, from David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell is the following. If you can get that back uh, where it's meant to be. There you go. Uh, Manchester United football director John Murto has stepped down from his post and will leave the club this week after more than 10 years service as the Ineos led restructure of sporting operations at Old Trafford continues. Uh, in a move now set to be officially confirmed, Murto has decided to stand aside altogether and leave the new setup to take shape. Murto will effectively be replaced by Dan Ashworth once the Newcastle United Sporting Director's spell of gardening leave finishes, whilst Southampton Director of Football Jason Wilcox is on course to be named Technical Director. United hope Wilcox will start in the coming weeks, provided an agreement can be reached on compensation, whereas more time could be required for Ashworth to commence duties. I wouldn't be shocked, actually. And maybe let me know in the, uh, in the chat. Let me know in the chat what you think about this. What's your prediction for Dan Ashworth? When do you think when do you think that one gets confirmed? When do you think it happens? Do you think it is a case of um the the compensation gets agreed and the terms are that he starts after the summer transfer window because it, it just feels less and less likely as time goes on that he's going to have any involvement on what happens this summer officially. Um I know that some people are saying, you know, 2025, you know, January 2025. I feel like it'll probably be once the summer window closes because you do get the impression that Newcastle are very aware that he knows everything or every plan that they've got. And I know that Newcastle fans will push back and go, well, actually, he wasn't as involved as you think he is, and he hasn't been as as involved as you would think, and it's actually Eddie Howe's, is it his brother? That's like a head of recruitment or negotiations at Newcastle. It was really him and his scouting that's been involved in the players. Dan Ashworth hasn't been all that. I must say, the pivot between Dan Ashworth being good and being shit from Newcastle fans has been just one of the most remarkable things I think I've seen in terms of timescale. It's it's hilarious. Like, two months ago, Dan Ashworth, he's a genius. He's brilliant. Look at the signings we've made. Last season, we, were, we finished in the top four. He's uh, so smart, so smart. What about the Tonali thing? Nobody knew about that. Nobody knew about the Tonali stuff. He kept it very secret. It's not his fault. Nobody knew. That's not on him. He resigns, goes on guard, and leaves going to Manchester United. This guy wasn't even involved. <laughs> he, he didn't do any of the negotiations. He didn't do any of the agreements. He should have known about Tonali. He knew about Tonali and didn't let anyone know. He's a disgrace. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. I don't care. He's absolutely terrible. Well, if you want to get rid of him, then we won't have to give too much compensation. No, 
You should pay £20 million for someone that's shit. This is what you should do. Yeah, get rid of Dan Ashworth. He was never good. I wonder what's changed in the last few weeks about that. I wonder what's changed. What's the difference between Dan Ashworth's status then and now? Oh, yeah, he's not there anymore. Oh, yeah, he's going to be coming into Manchester United. So that means now he must be rubbish and he's never done anything good. Oh, very interesting, very curious. It'll be the same with Southampton now, won't it? You'll get the detractors. Because <laughs> I've seen them try and pull this when they go, getting a, you're getting a director from, from the championship side. Mm. Standards at Manchester United, standards at Manchester United. And you go, well, you know, he was academy director at Manchester City. He's got a very good reputation for Manchester City. Oh, no, 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 he's at Southampton. So what does that say? Oh, Man United beefing with championship clubs all says a lot about them, doesn't it? Mm, very much. Oh, heaven forbid anything positive about Manchester United. Heaven forbid. Um, as far as Dan Ashworth, what people are saying in the chat here at the moment. Uh, Rich says, have a feeling it won't be for this summer. Lincoln Lawyer says the opposite, though. He'll be here for the summer. Um, Nagosi says, has there been an official statement from the club? No. The only stuff so far, anyway, that's come out is from David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell, which, to be fair, is as good as gospel, isn't it, really? Um, so a statement will be coming soon this week. Well, he's going to be leaving this week, so it's going to have to be at some point this week, isn't it, as well? Uh, Kenny Fan TV says, Dan Ashworth in January, I think, depends if United can negotiate with Newcastle for just $10 million. Uh, Dale says before the start of next season, halfway through the summer this year for Ashworth. Um, Giles says if we get Wilcox quickly, he could be acting director of football for this summer. Well, I think the fact that this Murto stuff is happening pretty quickly, to me anyway, says that the they think the Wilcox deal is going to be pretty swiftly done, pretty quickly. Um, because... If if they were concerned about Wilcox not coming in this summer, then you would see a thing where you go, well, I know his, historically John Murtaugh hasn't been great, but we need someone. Like we we need we need someone in the role. Omar Barada can't do everything by himself, and he's the chief executive as well. It's not really what he's supposed to be doing, but this summer he can kind of step in and and, and help out whilst we're kind of getting everyone into place. So this news to me does suggest, oh, actually. They're pretty confident that Wilcox will come in this summer and we've got more people more people there to, to help out. And um, I think, again, it's going to be interesting to see what our transfer strategy is like this, uh, this summer because I suppose the only thing you don't want is for Manchester United to be too hasty and do things too much in haste in the sense that usually the planning for a summer transfer window is done all year round, isn't it? It it really is. It's done, they, they say, don't they? The moment that one summer transfer window closes, then you're already thinking, right, what we do next year? What we do next year? You're already laying the groundwork. You're talking to agents, talking to players, talking to intermed intermediaries. You're doing the scouting. You're setting out scouting assignments, right, for the next six months, go to South America, find me a player that we can get in January, or we can get in the summer. Or some the best clubs, they're already thinking two or three windows ahead. They're thinking of the summer after next, going, right, this summer we're going to be getting these four, four positions. Next summer, we're going to be looking at this position. Two years time, that's when this guy's contract's going to be coming to an end or he's going to have a year left. So we're going to start putting the feelers out now and we're going to see if we can turn some heads and put some things in place. So all of that takes time. So you would wonder what plans will United have effectively in place come this summer? And that's kind of why you, I think you do see these reports saying that, well, Eric Ten Hag's still been actively involved in the recruitment for the upcoming summer and he's been actively involved in the planning for players that they're going after because a bit like with John Murto, those reports that were out there previously where he's still doing his job day to day because in the grander scheme of things at the moment, day to day for Manchester United, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed day to day right now because these people that are coming in are still not in place. Now, things will change a little bit day to day, I suppose, when Murto leaves at the end of the week because there'll be, have to be someone, an acting person, that will have to fill that role in the interim until uh, Jason Wilcox comes in. But that's, I think, why you're seeing these reports about, well, you know, nothing's really changed with Ten Hag at the moment because they, 
there almost isn't a decision to be made yet, or there aren't even people to make that decision also as well. And that will probably say a lot about Eric Ten Hag's future too, because we've seen those reports to suggest that Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Sir Dave Brailsford, they might have their own thoughts and opinions on what to do with Eric Ten Hag, but they really want that decision to be made, or at the very least recommended by that executive structure they're putting in. So Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, they want those people to be completely aligned on everything and go, right, what do you think of Eric? And they say positively or negatively what they think about him, what they think the United should do regarding him. And then they go in that direction. So I do think that is something that he's got in his favor right now, is that I used a quote this morning on the Morning View because it did stick with me when he said it. Uh, so Jim Ratcliffe, he said, we would wa rather walk to the the right decision than run to the wrong one. And that is so atypical of Manchester United over the last decade, isn't it? We have been so reactionary, the club, the fans, everything. So reactionary of making rash decisions, making hasty decisions, overpaying, overspending, underselling out of desperation because that's always we we are desperate we are desperate to get back to what we were under sir alex ferguson we're desperate to get back to being the example being the top of the tree when it comes to english european world football that we make rash decisions decisions that we don't really think through and we don't think about the potential ramifications of and that's led us to the position that we are today so according to Jim Ratcliffe. And again, proof will be in the pudding. Actions speak louder than words. But he's suggesting that they would rather walk to this correct decision, even if it takes more time. So like Dan Ashworth, even if it means, okay, we can't get him until next year. That's fine. We'll wait. Because if he's the right person, he's worth waiting for. And maybe that might be the same when it comes to Eriksen Hag. They go, you know what? We've got some feelings on it, but we don't feel comfortable making this call yet without everyone in place because everyone should have an opinion on this. So if they're not in place, then maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll see how uh, Eric works with these new people in. And maybe by that point, our minds might have changed as well. And maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait and see how it plays out. Or maybe because they are thinking so far ahead, maybe they made their mind up a while ago and they've been working towards whatever outcome they want to get to for months. I mean, we've seen this with these executives that are being brought in. We've seen this with... John Mur the John Murto example, I think, is going to be used as a great example here of someone that's been in the role for the last four months, even though most people probably knew the outcome of his future, which is he was going to go. As much as reports came out to suggest that maybe he was going to stay, everyone knew, everyone knew we were getting to this point. Everyone knew we were getting to John Murto leaving because you don't go after Dan Ashworth, you don't go after Jason Wilcox, you don't, you don't talk about having the best in class and then stick John Murto in his role that he's failed in the last two years. So everyone knew we were getting to this point, but until that happened, the wheel keeps spinning. You just keep going on day by day by day until the decision is eventually made and everything's finished up, which is what he's gonna be this week. So I think people will use the John Murto example when it comes to Ericsson Hag too and say, well, Okay, it's just going to keep going on. <laughs> you just keep, just keep going on. And then eventually, one day, something will change. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly big news, developing news. Of course, as I said, right now, I don't think we've had an official statement from Manchester United yet, as far as, um, as, far as I'm aware. I'll just double check if there's any um, new news regarding this or anything like that. Um, I don't think so. Once again, lots of people just saying the same news, which is that John Murto uh, is set to leave Manchester United, set to step down this week. No official statement from Manchester United that I can see right now. Um, once again, um, Mark Ogden is also saying something similar to what um, the Athletic are saying, saying that Darren Fletcher is expected to stay at Manchester United in a role linking the first team and academy that will be confirmed this summer. So he might be a bit of a... Uh, sort of maybe academy liaison or something like that. Of course, his sons play for Manchester United now uh, as well. But yes, that is the developing news. That is the breaking news this lunchtime. Of course, we get any more information on it, we'll go into it in much more depth in the future. Uh, what's on tap for the rest of the day? We do have Flex and KG show. It's going to be coming up at 7 and they will be discussing this uh, in that. I spoke to Flex uh, very shortly, actually, before I went live. And I know that uh, Flex and KG are going to be discussing that. So, yes, that's going to be going live um, at uh, 7 p.m. I say going live, premiering at uh, 7. Although I'm sure we'll still get the 
Um, <laughs> watch this countdown! I can't believe this countdown! This countdown is a disgrace. How dare they? It says premiere, but yes, that'll be uh, coming out at 7 p.m. So I'm sure they'll have a lot to say about that and a lot to say about a variety of other topics too. Um, and of course, if we get any uh, official statement from Manchester United, stay tuned for that. We'll discuss that as well. But yes, that is the uh, breaking news. That is the developing news this lunchtime. If you haven't already, click the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner and stay tuned because you never know what else can happen in the world of Manchester United. Have a good day. I'll speak for you again very soon. I'm out of here. Peace. Peace.